Welcome to our review on using static electricity. So what we need to actually do in this section then is understand some of these different uses that we have for static electricity. So the first one we've got is this lovely termed electrostatic dust precipitator. Now the whole purpose behind these is to actually remove particles of smoke from any waste gases coming out of chimneys in industry. So what we actually have in our little diagram there is how it works and we're going to look at that in a little bit more detail next. So the way these actually work then is inside the chimney there's this charged wire grid. Now as the soot passes up the chimney it crosses that grid and as it does so it becomes charged. So what we then find is our little particles of dust and soot etc have now got a charge on them. A bit further up the chimney you can see there are these oppositely charged electric plates. Now because they've got the opposite charge to our little particles of dust and soot then it's going to be attracted to those metal plates. As it does so it then sticks together on those plates and several times a year all they do is they just strike them with metal hammers so that all that dust that's accumulated then falls off and accumulates at the bottom where we can collect it and remove it without it ending up in our atmosphere. So the grids actually have a very high voltage and the whole purpose behind that is to collect as much of that soot and dust as possible. So what actually happens as those particles go through the grid is that they're either going to gain or lose electrons. And obviously we know that if we gain or lose electrons then we create a charge on that particular thing. So what we then find is as they continue up the chimney and approach those metal plates they're actually going to induce an opposite charge in those plates. And the way that that happens is that as they're passing up those charged little particles they're either going to attract or repel electrons inside the plate. So that creates an opposite charge on the very surface of the plate which then obviously attracts the soot and dust particles to it. The second use we've got for static electricity then is in paint spray. So what we actually have then is the arm of the paint sprayer is charged up so that as the paint passes out of the spray gun then it becomes charged and in the diagram there we can see that the paint is becoming positively charged. At the same time the object that we're going to be spraying is given the opposite charge so in our diagram it, the car body is given a negative charge. Now obviously because we've got positively charged paint, negatively charged car body, the opposites attract. Now in addition to obviously being attracted to the car body, because our paint particles all have the same charge, they've all got that positive charge on them, then they're going to be repelling each other. And because those particles of paint repel one another, then it makes a much finer spray. And because we've actually got the opposite charge on our car, that's going to be attracting the paint to it. And this means that we're going to have much less waste because the paint will be attracted to the object we want to spray paint. And it will also give us a nice even coat of paint. Another object that uses our static electricity then are laser printers. So what we've got inside the laser printer then is the actual drum and what happens is as we shine a laser onto it it becomes negatively charged wherever that laser hits. So what we then find is that the toner that's the basically like the ink as that's negatively charged as well what's going to happen is it's going to be attracted to the positive parts of the drum i.e. the bits that haven't had the laser shine on them. Then as our paper goes through that toner is transferred onto the paper and therefore the image that we've actually printed comes up on the paper too. The final use then that we need to look at is the defibrillator. Now this is the machine that we're actually going to use to restart someone's heart whenever it's stopped. And what we've got are those two paddles you can see in the diagram there and they are charged up using electrostatics and the way we get that charge is from a high voltage supply. So what we're actually going to be doing here is by using that static charge passing through the body we're actually going to then make the heart contract and hopefully start beating again. A few points to note about our defibrillator. Firstly we need to have good electrical contact with the chest otherwise obviously that charge won't be able to pass through the body. We've got to make sure that the handles on the paddles that we're actually going to be holding have an insulated handle. Otherwise, what would happen is as soon as that electrostatic shock passes through the patient, it would also pass through the operator. And that's obviously very bad news as it can stop their heart and kill them. 
And that's exactly the same reason why if ever you've watched these medical shows on TV where they're using that defibrillator, then just before they push the button on the paddles, then they all shout clear and everyone stands back. Again, it's to stop that charge flowing through people whose hearts are working absolutely fine. Now, obviously these three uses that we've looked at here with our electrostatic dust precipitators, the paint spraying, the defibrillators, these are potentially very good six mark questions because there's certainly enough that we could say to get six points in there, okay? So do make sure that if you are asked a six mark question on this, that we look carefully at the bullet points or the guidance in the question to cover both aspects, okay? So cover what happens when we've got the like charges, what happens when we've got the unlike charges as well.